Hey everybody, welcome back to Crazy Dave's Crew. I'm Laura. You're watching Thursday Threads. So I haven't been doing a lot of sewing lately because my machine decided to act up. So you know, it kind of made me think of that Christmas song and we're talking about the special Christmas toy and how it would buzz when it did this and it would chirp when it did that and, and it would whir when it stood still, which all that is wonderful for a toy. Not so great with the sewing machine. Let me show you. So let me show you what I'm talking about here with the machine. So I'm just going to run a couple stitches. You should be hearing a bit of a clunk. should be hearing that it's just not quite right a little bit of a clunk and when I was trying to sew with it a day or two ago I want to tell you it was threads everywhere I was really getting a bad little nest here okay so I had a choice to make I could take it into my local sewing machine shop which is Chattanooga sewing machine over at Hamilton Place. Um, and because this is a combination sewing machine and embroidery machine, just getting in it for a cleaning um, is a lot more. So I've had this happen, which I've got it scheduled for its maintenance. I have, I've actually had this happen to me before. So we are going to try to fix it. Um, first thing you're going to want to do, now this is a brother. This is an SE 400, but this same method applies for all of my brother machines. I've got a couple. Um, I am going to change out the needle and I'm going to change out the bobbin casing. So a lot of times that, that nesting that I was getting, um, if, I've, my, if my needle's bent even just a little bit, it will scratch and mess up my bobbin casing, in which case then that would cause a lot of that bird nesting that I was talking about. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is turn off your machine. And I hate that because I love having my light, but safety, safety, and I go ahead and unplug it too. Just to be on the safe side. Now at any time you can refer to your owner's manual. Okay. So, I'm also going to take off my foot, and just to make my life easier, I am going to take off my foot shaft. Remember, righty-tighty, lefty-loosey. So, I took off my, my shaft and my foot, and I'm going to put those together just so I don't lose them, okay? Now, I'm also going to take out my needles. So on the brother models, I have a little turn here, and all I'm going to do again is turn to the left, and out will come my needle, okay? And I'm just going to put this over here, I'm going to attach it into my little scrap piece of fabric. I don't want to lose that, okay? Now, I have misplaced my little special tool for opening up my needle plate here. So I'm gonna use a good old quarter. Okay. You're just 
just gonna. Yeah, I would recommend one thing at a time, and you want to place it where you're gonna be able to find it. And a good rule for me is I'll take off this little front cover here, and I will put it inside here. That way I won't lose it. Or you could have like a little cup or something. So one thing at a time. So we're just going to take this other screw out. Now at any time, check your owner's manual, your user's manual. If you don't have one, I'm sure you can look online to the manufacturer. Or you could always just pop in to a local quilt shop and ask them, just, hey, show me how to take this apart. A lot of times they'll be very accommodating, especially if you go, hey, and I'll buy the bobbin casing from you. Um, don't take anything out. Make sure before you remove anything besides the screws, you want to look and see how things are attached and how they're put together. This is like a puzzle here. These two pieces fit together. And we're just going to remove this one as well. As you see, it's got little pieces, jigsaw pieces that fit in. All right, now, bobbin casing. If you look in here, you're going to see on your bobbin casing, there's a little white arrow. And in your sewing machine, there should be a little white dot. On my machine and my bobbin casings, I have a little arrow and a little dot. And it shows that those need to be lined up. Okay? And that's why I was saying you need to look and see how things are put together before you start removing anything. I'm going to take out my bobbin. Put it in there. Okay. Now I'm going to see how the bobbin casing moves around. So now I'm going to take out my little bobbin casing. Now before I put the new one in, I need to do some brushing, so let's do that. All right, so I've got a couple clean paint brushes. And we're just going to try to clean some of this out. I have been told by my repairman at Chattanooga Sewing to not use canned air. Okay? So just letting you know, um, my guy tells me don't do it. And as you're cleaning, you can also use your your tweezers, okay? And you just want to get as much of that out as you can. You can see. Look at all that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, now let's go back to what I was originally doing, which was the bobbin casing. So let's just kind of get all this out of the way. Now, I get my bobbin casings from Amazon. I have double checked with the manufacturer uh, 
my handbook over what size I need to get. And I order mine from Amazon. It is a little bit cheaper. But I think it does the trick. And anything that we use, I will try to put a, um, we'll try to get a link to it. Okay. Now, because this is a Honeywell and not a brother bobbin case, I don't have my little dot. But I can, I remember that, the, that right there is the dot. And I can just take a look at this. Okay, and if you can take a look at these, you can tell which one's the new one and which one's the old one. Okay. But I know that the dot's going to be right there and there is a little indention right there so I'm going to put it right in here all right so why don't of course the best way to know if you've done it is to test it a little bit of dust right there let's get that out Always refer to your manual. Okay. You're also going to see, see how they're right there. Okay. Those are just going to fit in like that. So let's get a All right, and this time we're going to turn to the right. I've got that one started. Find my other one that's in my in my case. Keeping it nice and safe. Get my fingers over here and we're going to get that one started. Now, I make it just a basic rule. If your bobbin casing is messed up, chances are so a needle. Um either caused by, the, you know, your bobbin casing can get messed up by your needle. Um, I would also imagine your needle could get messed up by the bobbin casing if there's a problem. So I just make it a habit. If I have to change out the bobbin casing, I, I don't care if I just put that needle in last week. I go ahead and switch it out because it just, it isn't worth it to me to then have to go through problems. All right, let's put back in our bobbin. So far so good. Our bobbin cover. And so we're going to put that back on. All right, so I've got everything put together and I'm going to go ahead and plug it back up. And I'm going to get my needles. And these are just a universal needle. It's a 7010. I do know a lot of times for doing specialty fabrics, you're going to need special needles. Not all needles are the same. When I'm embroidering, I need embroidery needles. If I'm working on, on knits, uh, I need like a, a jersey needle. If I'm working on denim, I need a denim needle. So we've got our, our needle in the hole. Okay. 
and I'm just going to tighten that little screw there. We're going to plug it back up, attach the foot, and now let's give it a try. Let's see if we have fixed the problem. Let's see if she sounds a little bit better. So, re-thread the needle. Get me another piece of fabric. I'm going to fold it over. Just because it's... I like to test it on two thicknesses. So let's just see what she does here. Isn't that nicer? That's so much nicer now. Let's go do another test. I'm going to change the needle position. And you'll see I have no nesting. It just sounds so much better. And I'm not coming up with a bunch of the knotting and the nesting and uh, mussy thread. So this is a much, much, much cleaner and saved me the time, saved me a whole lot of trouble of loading up the machine just for a bobbin casing. I hope this has been helpful. Please be sure you always check your own owner's manual. Be sure you turn off and unplug your machine before you start opening up the innards. And always double check and make sure that your screws are nice and tight. Happy sewing, everybody. May your bobbins be just full enough to finish that project. Thanks so much. Thanks for joining us on Thursday Threads. You've been watching Crazy Dave's crew. We'll see you next time.